The History of St. Patrick's Bell According to legend, when St. Patrick set up a new Christian parish or community in Ireland, he would choose one of his disciples to lead it after he left. Before his departure, he would present his chosen disciple with a bell to call the locals to prayer. Apparently, in the province of Connaught alone, he had presented over 50 bells, and he had three blacksmiths following him wherever he went, who were employed full-time to make the bells. St. Patrick's bell was just like these bells. When Columcill had the bell sent to Ormond, it was left in the hands of the Mulholland family. It remained in their possession and was largely forgotten about until the 18th century, when the last surviving member of their family, Henry Mulholland, transferred its ownership to Adam McLean, one of his school students. Mulholland told McLean before he died that there was an oak box buried in his backyard, and he was bequeathing it to him. In the box, McLean found Sanit Patrick's bell and an ancient Irish Bible of equally significant value. The bell and shrine remained in the possession of McLean until his death, before his family sold it to a professor at Trinity College, Dublin. Then, the Royal Irish Academy became aware of the items and their importance and purchased them for £625, a hefty sum at the time. The Design of the Shrine While the bell it is, of course, of immense importance, it is the shrine it sits in that is the real eye-catcher. The bell has a rather humble design. It is made of two sheets of iron that have been riveted together. A bronze coating was added sometime after the bell was sent to Armit by Column Sill. The shrine, on the other hand, is intricate in its detail. The shrine was crafted at a later date than the bell. An inscription on its surface indicates it was made around 1100 AD. An inscription along the edge of the backplate also gives details on who made it, Qduilig o Emanen and his sons, and who commissioned it. The shrine was commissioned by the High King of Ireland, Donal Uilach Lane, the keeper of the bell, Catholin Uonalcha Lane. The Irish version of Mulholland is also inscribed here. The shrine is trapezoidal in shape with a curved crest at the top. There are two small handles on either side of the shrine to pick it up or handle it. The front panel is covered in a silver gilt frame that once held 30 panels of gold filigree arranged in the shape of a ringed cross. It also features numerous Celtic knot patterns. The sides of the shrine are adorned with openwork panels depicting elongated beasts intertwined with a pattern of snakes, possibly a reference to the legend of St. Patrick banishing the snakes from Ireland. The back of the shrine, meanwhile, is much plainer in style. It is decorated with an openwork silver plate, featuring a pattern of interlocking crosses. Finally, the top of the shrine is perhaps the most intricately decorated part. It features two birds made of iron, as well as several more panels of filigree and a beautiful, symmetrically patterned design in what is a distinctly Viking-influenced Celtic pattern, known as Urn's style. Today, St. Patrick's Bell and Shrine sit in the National Museum of Ireland.